Well, Vince, I want to welcome you to your new home and traveling up your new ramp. That's just for you, sir, and all the other folks that are in a chair, or walkers for that matter. Low cabinets for easy access. No cabinets under the sink for easy access. <clears throat> Take note of the audio and visual alarm system for hearing impaired or visually impaired people. <clears throat> Extra wide doors for easy pass through. Grab rails to give you the assistance you need. A toilet seat that's at the same level of your uh, chair seat so it's easy to slide over it. I forgot to mention that we have a couple of kits for you. Number one is called a bed and bath kit. It's uh, simply towels and, and, and bedding for your new beds. Uh, as well as we have a, uh, uh, it's a cook kit. Pans and pots and the things like that that you need when you get in your new home. Okay. Tell me about the furniture, does that come with everything? Yes, all the, everything that you see inside this unit is staged in the unit. The contractor, when they do the installation, will take all, this is all set up for, for transportation, so we don't want it sliding around while they're coming across the country. So they'll disband all this stuff and they'll set it up for you. Excellent. Okay, the same thing with the beds. Uh, you get a microwave. Okay. Um, also, the contractor is responsible for getting powering up your unit. This will all happen before you get handed these. Okay, so, so when I come in, the lights will work, the water will work, the, everything will be operational. Everything will be operational. So when you move in, you can have dinner in your house tonight. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Excellent. Also, part of our contract is that if you have a service issue, the contractor has to maintain a 24-hour hotline. So if something happens and you're unable or unwilling to do the repair, you can call them and they will either send somebody out or give you guidance over the phone on something simple. Tell me about the ramp that we came up on. Uh, all ramps are, have to be compliant. The ratio is for every 12 inches of height, the ramp goes up one inch. So if we had a 30 inch tall doorway, then the ramp is going to be 30 feet long. That's why this ramp's longer than the unit itself. Some of them we can do what we call switchbacks. So you'll have a 15 foot ramp and then you'll have a, a, a landing, if you will. Uh, all door handles are levered handles. Mm. Some people don't have the capability to do the normal rotating door handle. So people who have limited mobility or function of their hands can do the levers. You can actually, I, I know some people with really bad hands and they can open a door like that. This is the bedroom. This is one of two. You're in a two bedroom uh, accessible unit. There's your kitchen kit and your bed and bath as well, sir. Make special note, the circuit breaker panel, it's, it's lower than normal. And that's for the same reason as the cabinets in the kitchen. Yep. You may know that we've loaded up our stock on more of the accessible units than the national average calls for. All these trailers we got in staging are pre-positioned so that when work orders come across our desk, we can move fast. We already have six that have been delivered, uh, three in each um, division. Um, there's three different, this could be put on your property if it's large enough for the construction of your new home, as well as this home, your temporary home. And you could also uh, wind up in what they call group sites where maybe a neighborhood uh, of people could live together, like maybe six or eight units. And then we have group sites, which are big parks. And my understanding is that not only is the house being accessible, but the sites are accessible as well. That's correct. Yeah, there's a certain percentage that, uh, that I don't have the number in my head right now, but for example, the playground yeah. in a group site, that will be accessible as well. So I've got kids, I can go down to the playground and, and have equal access to right. all of that. Right, the, the, there's the operative word, equal access. That's great. So Mark, I noticed it was a little difficult to get over the threshold there. Right, this morning we learned, we suspect that this is what we refer to as a northern unit, would have been put in cold climates. Okay. And that little ridge there is so that the gasket on the door can make a seal. All right. 
so right after you found it, uh, Russ and Jim put their heads together on another unit, and we think we have a fix. Uh, and if this works, of course, you're the guy that's going to give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, if it works, then we're going to send this back as a, we need to fix this. So this morning, we found uh, this little bump here. This may not look like much unless you're in a chair. <clears throat> so right after we found this issue, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Uh, Russ and Jim put their thinking hats on and we started to dismantle it. And we think this is gonna be the fix. We're gonna remove this threshold. Okay. Then we're gonna remove the support to it. Now we have that much of a I don't think this will be a bump. That's great. That's okay. almost perfectly flat. Almost, it's yes. Right there. Right. The wheels that can go over that, whether it's power or manual. So the reason yeah. why this thing was here, Vance, and this is, we've got to come up with the other side of this fix, is okay. let's put this all back together. There's a gasket on the bottom of the door here, yeah. and it's it's got to meet up with some kind of a barrier so we have a seal. More to follow. But, we're on our way to progress. Well, this is why we do it. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate you being so responsive. You're welcome.